talk about BECS. What is BECS? Well, in Bigelow Institute for Consciousness Studies um, is formed, was formed to try to um, conduct research and facilitate research into the possibility of, of the survival of human consciousness beyond bodily death and also to, if, if that is true, then to explore what is the other side all about? Because it's a big deal. If we're gonna be spending a minority amount of our spiritual existence here, incarnated here, <clears throat> and 99.9 .9 or what other percent of, of our spiritual existence isn't here. And even if you believe in reincarnations and you say, well, how many incarnations are you going to have? Um, still, you're, you're spending a huge amount of your spiritual existence on the other side. <clears throat> to me, it's pretty damn important as to what is it? What, what, what is it all about that you should be preparing for? Does it matter as to how you conduct your life here? If it does exist, if it's real, if it's true, <clears throat> that your consciousness will survive. And, and is, it, is there a connection between what you did here with the opportunity you have to live here, to live in this side, to live in this existence, um, it doesn't matter what you did relative to the other side. What if it does matter? What if it matters a lot? And, and uh, wow, then it's pretty important to know something about the other side. The idea of consciousness, of course, it's a buzzword now. It has been for a while, but I mean, it's really a buzzword now in paranormal UFO circles. People can't quite get their head around what it is, though. They don't know for sure where it comes from. Yeah. They don't know how to measure it. <clears throat> yeah. That's a, that's a big task you're, you're, uh, you're taking up. That's a heavy lift. Yeah, you have this dichotomy <clears throat> between the brain <clears throat> and mind, right? The brain is the physical manifestation and the parochial thinking is that when the brain ceases to function, <clears throat> you don't have a mind. That's it. There is no consciousness. Yeah. And so we know by uh, a number of different ways that the brain can cease functioning, but your mind can continue. Well, then where the hell is your mind? Hey, you've lost your mind, <laughs> right? So where is it? So uh, yeah, it seems to be a little amorphous. It's, it's, it's outside of the physical container. So it, it um, so uh, how, is, how is your consciousness being, being preserved and held? And by, by what, by how is that? So that's why everybody struggles to try to define consciousness because we think in terms of, well, things need to be in some kind of structure in, in a container or whatever, you know? Um, the normal thinking of cosmology is that, <clears throat> that, <clears throat> that space has a limitation of distance and, and that there is such a thing as, as, uh, as time you know, uh, that space began somewhere. Um, neither of, of which I believe in, by the way. Um, I think both time and space are infinite. Um, but, um, so I'm not a big bang theorist. Hmm. Um, uh, so, uh, what, what's the container for this mind now? Your brain's dead. But how is it that you're able to report things and not when you're revived, if you've had a near-death experience and you have no business, like in Leslie Keen's uh, movie series on TV and in her book, and she's, she has uh, these people who tell their stories are terrific uh, stories that you, you can't just explain away. And yet they should have <clears throat> no access whatsoever to the information that they were able to, to, that they had, they acquired. So around the world, there are 
pockets of interest, uh, academic sort of interest, scientific interest in trying to measure this and try to document it. Near-death experiences, reincarnation cases, yeah. survival of consciousness, but not a lot. At least they're, they're low-key, maybe by necessity. Uh, maybe other parts of the world are more open to these topics. Uh, but you, your goal is to sort of elevate the level of discussion? <clears throat> it starts with us as individuals where we, we have a curiosity. <clears throat> so <clears throat> my goal starts, to, to my, my, my uh, energy begins with <clears throat> my own personal curiosity and, and the desire to make a difference. So um, um, that's the desire to make a difference um, <clears throat> now has overtaken the curiosity. So uh, it's, it's that um, <clears throat> I, I, I think because I believe the other side does exist <clears throat> that and there's benefits if, if people, because I've experienced those with, with people passing over and most people of, of any age you know, have people that they lose. So <clears throat> if, uh, if you can, if people can be helped um, in a grief situation, in a sorrow situation, <clears throat> by, by information, then, and the information isn't something that hurts, it hurts you, it's a, it's a good, it's a good, um, it's a good gift to have that information come to you that, and, and maybe give you a belief in something else to grab onto, <clears throat> that the religion wasn't enough. The, the parochial religion what isn't enough. You're asking for more than that. You're asking for more than just what another human being has told you to think about, or to believe in, to commit yourself to. <clears throat> and that and that, in my particular case, that's the situation, that's the case. So I think, well, maybe other people are in the same boat. And the more they can grab onto, the better off they'll, they'll feel. And, 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 and especially if they, if they get to a point to where they, they, they have enough conviction, they say, yeah, this is now what I believe is real. So if you could make a dent in that, if you could elevate the discussion, support research that establishes beyond reasonable doubt that consciousness goes on, that we don't die. You could effectively uh, decrease people's fear of dying. You could help people get through grief yeah. and maybe make a difference on what they end up doing here to benefit them on the other side. Many different kinds of connections like that. That's right. That's right. And <clears throat> and uh, and all, any of those are, is, are, are such, it's, uh, there's, it's so powerful. You can pick any one, <clears throat> and, and that's a big deal. What you, what you, as a consequence, if you believe that there's a karmic connection between both sides, <clears throat> then what you do matters. For better or for worse, it matters. What evidence exists in, for you? What convinces you that there is another side and that it's worth pursuing in a scientific and academic sort of a... <clears throat> well, you just went through some of the lists. I think you start with, with uh, near-death experiences. Um, um, those are very, very profound. Not, not everybody <clears throat> um, has the full Monty and a full near-death experience. Some people um, don't have any kind of experience and they've, they've gone into a near-death situation, but they don't have the experience. <clears throat> Reincarnation, there are cases involving young, very young children that are, and Ian Stevenson, his book, um, 22 Cases Suggestive of a Reincarnation is a classic, and he had researched uh, 2,000 cases. That 22 was just a minuscule sampling of all of his research and work, and <clears throat> so, Reincarnation uh, circumstances uh, really stretch the bazaar if you're trying to give conventional answers as to how people can, can know things they should have no business knowing. And uh, so you're, you're beyond the credible 
If you're, you're just, you've gone, you've, it's easier to, <clears throat> to acknowledge something that's phenomenal here sometimes than go to extremes and trying to concoct an answer that's, that would fit a, 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 a typical sciences method of, of answering something. You know, you can go to ridiculous lengths. And I think having, having ap apparitions, if you see an apparition, how do you explain that? that? So if you have personal experiences, if you, if you saw something move, something levitate, um, poltergeist effects like very loud crashes and noises on things and, and nothing is out of place, and I've had that happen. Um, I've, had, I've had things, I've, I've, uh, that, so personal experiences help. Um, trusted members of your family uh, telling you things that, that you know these the family members and they're so um, uh, struck by what's happened to them um, and that's that's impressive how, how was it they what were the conditions under which you were told something and and uh, how profound something is so I think there's all kinds of ways you know EVP um, you know, uh, things that are caught on camera. Um, and uh, so there's a, a lot of different ways to try to gather the information. Both Edison and Tesla were working on something that the equivalent of a spirit phone at the end of their lives. Yeah, they were. Is there, do you, what do you think about that? And is there any similar research going on now? Uh, well, George Mead <coughs> tried to. I think um, the, uh, uh, was, is it the, uh, the Fletcher Foundation? The, um, Oh, I've got a block down the name. That, that, <clears throat> so through electronics, it has been tried many times and uh, up to current. There are current efforts underway to try to have some kind of uh, <clears throat> a spirit connection uh, electronically. And um, uh, of course, <clears throat> now we haven't even mentioned the entire fields of mediums, of physical mediums that manifest physical um, physical apparitions that actually you could actually touch and feel. You think that's legit? There are legit ones. I have a totally open mind about it. I haven't personally investigated enough yet to, to <clears throat> have an absolute conviction uh, one way or another. I would say <clears throat> I would not bet against it. I think that the, I think <clears throat> There are people I know and you know that um, have personally touched and felt and been involved with significant controls that are huge. The controls are, are, are significant. And um, so I wouldn't say that right now, based on my lack of personal experience, I, I wouldn't say that it's, it's, Im it's impossible. I couldn't say it's 100% it's real. but. I wouldn't bet against it. Um, you have been reading everything you get your hands on. You've built a good library of, uh, of books <clears throat> that establish sort of the work that's been done before. It goes way back. I mean, oh, some yeah. really credible people, right. big minds of their time, dug oh, yeah. into this and took it seriously. Oh, they, they did. It's really interesting how even, uh, you know, <clears throat> the, in the late 1800s or from 1850s uh, to, to uh, maybe 19... 30s, they, there was a world-class scientists were were involved, as opposed to today, it's too, it's too uh, it causes too much jeopardy to their their career and their their job and and all of that, their reputations. So uh, it takes gutsy people who are going to be approaching this, who are scientists, and they're going to be approaching this, and and they're uh, researchers of different elk. And um, because it seems like a hundred, <clears throat> over a hundred and some years ago that uh, uh, it was much more legitimate ground for exploration by, my, by mainstream scientists, uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, people in the social sciences and physicists to try to understand this. Because things were happening that only somebody who maybe was very fearful, would not be capable of acknowledging, these events are all happening. What the hell is going on here? And am I too fearful to even have the curiosity to pursue this? I'm, uh, I'm unwilling to even 
talk to these people and understand the circumstances and do it again and again and again on different kinds of cases to come to a conclusion. I don't understand that kind of thinking, that, that kind of self-handcuffing. I don't. You're going to reach out to the world here in a very big way. Uh, you're going to make an announcement. I guess you could make an announcement right now uh, about what Bix wants to do this first big endeavor. What is it? Well, we, we tried to think of ways that, you know, what can we do as a, as a new organization here uh, to create some energy? And so the idea was let's create a contest. So we have a first, second, third prize. And so we have $500,000 first prize, $300,000 second prize, and $150,000 third prize. And the contest is for uh, essays to be produced to choose among a variety of essays, and we hope we have more than three to choose from, <laughs> that, that express in the best way the best evidence uh, for establishing that the other side is real. It exists. The other side exists. So based on that, what is your evidence for that? And oh, by the way, <clears throat> you're not allowed to quote scripture because anybody can do that and we don't look at that as significant enough and maybe significant's not the right word as of the appropriate kind of proof that we're looking for, just quoting scripture. We're looking something more tangible, more concrete, if you will. And <clears throat> so what's the... What's the um, legal construct here? What's the basis of, of this so-called proof? Well, we're, we're saying in the contest it's, it's uh, acceptable to use the standard that the American court system and the court system in the major Western world uses beyond a reasonable doubt. So beyond a reasonable doubt doesn't say you have to be 100% sure that you committed this crime in order to be sentenced. We, but we have to be beyond a reasonable doubt that you did. Right. Right? And oh, by the way, <clears throat> witnesses matter, don't they? In the legal system. Yeah. They matter. And who the witnesses are matter. And how many witnesses are there matter. So we're saying, okay, that's part of the criteria here for what you're going to be trotting out in your... 25,000 word or less essay, <clears throat> because that's, that's the limit, and 25,000 or, or fewer words, to prove your case. What have you done to prove your case beyond a reasonable doubt that the other side exists? So it could be somebody who's done deep investigations into near-death experiences and document the cases, for example. Oh, yeah. It could be a priest, a reverend, a minister, a rabbi. It can be anybody who belongs to the religious community because they're going to say, wait a minute, now you're in our backyard, so we're going to tell you what, that, that the other side exists and here's how we can tell you why, how it exists. So let's hear or, it. That's, that it does know, exist. Yeah, sure. Right. Um, Without quoting scripture. Ghost hunters. Poltergeist hunters, ghost hunters, could they, they could apply? I think, I think we, have a, we have a series of rules and regulations and it's going to be on our website. We're, we're, uh, we're going to be uh, opening that web website up soon. And all the rules and regulations are there. The application is there that people have to fill out and so on to be a qualified uh, candidate. And so we have opened that up to um, the research community that uh, spans, um, it could be journalists who have spent a lot of time and effort in this field and they really understand uh, 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 about it and they uh, whether it's Jeffrey Mishlov for example or Leslie Keene or other people there there's a, I won't go through all the names but there are a lot of researchers who who uh, <clears throat> really really has have spent their lives their entire lives in this in this work and uh, but we we have criteria that that at least says, well, you, you, you uh, can't just transition <clears throat> from no involvement in this topic and decide to enter the contest and waste everybody's time 
uh, in, in, in trying to go through your, your essay and your paper, and you have no foundation for what you're talking about. You haven't researched anything and, and all that, you know. So, um, so we, we, we are trying to, to make the papers as high quality as possible. And I'm hoping it's going to be tough for our judges to choose uh, between who's first, second, and third. So how many judges? Five. <coughs> Excuse me, five judges. And these are what? <coughs> these are people who are knowledgeable in this field? <coughs> these are people who, <coughs> in one case, <coughs> is not. <coughs> but she is a, a terrific statistician. She is a very high quality academic. <clears throat> she was on our NED Science Advisory Board, and she was, she was there for the consciousness side of that. She was part of the group uh, that was predisposed to that versus ET, uh, I think. And, and although she stayed on <clears throat> afterwards, <clears throat> when we had to bifurcate and, and let go of the, of the one side, um, so we, ha but we have other people. We have uh, a person who <clears throat> is a physicist, and we have a person who, we have two other people who are, are three other people who are very involved in this. We have actually some of these people also are on our board of directors. So we have three who have been very involved uh, many years in their lives in this in this work. We have another fellow who's a. Uh, <clears throat> A uh, <clears throat> neurologist, and um, he's he is um, a medical doctor, and um, uh, he has a very strong interest in this. And I, I can't say exactly how much researching he has done, but he he privately and personally is very very uh, committed. Are you releasing the names of the judges, or are you keeping that to yourself <clears throat> for now? Uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't at okay. this. I probably shouldn't at this. Okay, time. so the process is you open up the website. People can apply, fill out an application to see if they they pass the pass muster, right? And then they work on the paper. What's the deadline for submission of the paper? Well, they can they can submit <coughs> submit their uh, application up until the twenty eighth of February, right? And then they can go to work on their paper, and then by August the first, they need to submit their paper by that date, and then the judges have three months. <clears throat> to digest the papers and to make collectively their decisions and they can they can collaborate with each other and trying to to make the decision like you know a Supreme Court would uh, not just in a vacuum but they can talk to each other as to why this and why that and uh, like a jury would you know as to wh why what should their decision be <clears throat> and um, so they have three months to do that so uh, five hundred thousand dollars first prize, three hundred thousand dollars second prize, right. one hundred fifty thousand dollars. That kind of money should attract a lot of entrance, a lot of interest. Well, we hope so. You know, we're we're trying to do something we think is and hope is good uh, for the for the whole work, for everybody's work. Um, so many people have spent their lives uh, in this field and haven't received much recognition. They've written books. But uh, it's not a field that, <clears throat> that attracts masses of people as researchers. And so we're trying to stir the pot and create some excitement. You know, it's better than lighting fireworks and sending up a bunch of yeah. balloons, you know. So we're trying to do something. You hope that you'll get thousands of entries. Yeah, right? we, we, maybe it's, maybe we, you know, I hate to even speculate on that, but we would like to have a good number, whether it's thousands or or 100 or 200, we hope that, that uh, we, we at least have a showing that's... Uh, uh, what happens to the papers that are submitted? Do you publish them? Do you post them? We, we, uh, we ask permission uh, from the winners or, when they, or people that uh, apply. We say we ask permission to put them on our website. And we, we also hope that the winners are going to be willing to go on programs, such as your program, Coast to Coast, and, uh, and be interviewed and talk about their paper <clears throat> and why their paper is, is worthy of winning and maybe 
even being a runner-up. There's no monetary awards for being runner-up, but we'd like to give honorable mention <coughs> to papers that were, the judges decided, weren't the three winners, but they might have said, gee, we wish we had 10 different categories right. because we have these other seven papers that are so damn good, uh, and, and, but we were limited to three winners and we had a hard time trying to choose. Um, will Bix be like NIDS in that it will dive into the research itself? Or are you looking for ideas that you could pursue on your own, or is that you more you want to encourage the world at large to, to do this work? <clears throat> we like to get our feet wet. We like to get our fingers into things and, and just see if, uh, you know, what, um, <clears throat> what possibilities there might be as to what we can do to help. And, and so we look at our, and BICS looks at itself as, as being a research organization. 